God, we're so, we are so thankful. We know that Christ is our healer, but I believe that community is an important part of the cure. And I've, I've, I've seen and been a part of churches in times past where it was either all about the Holy Spirit and the presence of God, or it was all about people and community, and it was either this or that, but I believe Jesus modeled a way that it can be both and, amen? And that is what we're believing for, that is what we're continuing every day to make space for here, is not just for us to have an encounter here that transforms us, but for us to begin to grow in that transformation with one another so that we can see the world transformed as well, amen? Wow. Isn't Jesus awesome? Is, I mean, isn't he awesome? Isn't he worthy of all praise? Think about it, guys. We get to do this. The beauty of being a believer is you don't have to, you get to. It's a privilege. And I'm so thankful for the privilege of being a part of this body. You know, Tina and I were a part of a lot of different things in life and in ministry and church before God brought us to a home we never knew we had. And he put a dream in our heart. And to see each facet, like Bailey said, of that dream, not just being in place, but properly positioned, it's, it's the best thing in the world. It's the best thing where I'm telling you, listen, if every one of us in the same way that Tina and I had a dream that brought us to this city that became, became what we are now, God has put a dream in your heart and your dream is a puzzle piece that alone, it looks insignificant, but I wanna tell you it's significant to God. And when he begins to connect it with other individual pieces, what comes together is not only significant, it's supernatural and all of creation is groaning for the mosaic of the miraculous manifest in not just a healthy way, but in a way that heals people, heals nations and really restores God's original intent and design for fellowship in the cool of the day that we would not just behold him, but we become like him. We begin to multiply his image in the earth, that out of our relationship with him, we would have dominion. That doesn't mean we would lord over. You see, true, true spiritual authority is not to come over, it's to come under. Even the, even the fivefold, it wasn't that people could ascend the apostolic mountain. If you really understand it, it's all about he who is greatest is least and he who is least is greatest. It's all about how to begin to lay down your life to see other people's dreams come to pass. And this is a place that not only are you given permission to dream, but we won't let you just dream your dream. We're gonna create a place to where you can live those dreams as well. Amen. Can we thank God for Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Ashley and the incredible environment that they're creating with community care? You know, it's, I remember sitting with them at Jim and Nick's shortly after they came and just recognizing there was something really special in their life. And I, they had told me some of the things they had did in ministry and ways they had served. And I said, but what's in your heart? And they began to talk about you. They began to talk about people. They began to talk about creating a place, community with discipleship. I said, let's do it, man. Let's do it. And I want to tell you, this is a place that where God has put in you, it can be planted so it can reproduce. Yeah. Amen. We've got a full day. We've already had a full day. Amen. I just, uh, I'll tell you, listen, when, when Pastor Suze, when she said, when, listen, can we thank the Lord for incredible worship team? What an incredible <laughs> worship set. Mm. You know, we, we kind of, we, we, we have a regular thing here where we prepare sets and we prepare sermons, but then the spirit just comes in and takes us a different way. And I'm so thankful for Pastor Jeff's leadership when the, when the spirit blows, he doesn't pull back, but he hoists his sail and he says, wherever you want to take us, that he's not, he's not managed by a clock, but he's led by the comforter. And it's so beautiful. And honestly, with that moment that was created for the hallelujah. And when he created a moment and then passed, I mean, it's a beautiful picture of the Lord and the bride when he passed it off to his bride, when he passed it off to Sue's. And when she's saying hallelujah, how many of you felt a glory come in? The atmosphere, 
came in. And it was all of a sudden, I felt like, like the glory came in and the Lord began to speak to me that we're about to see angelic interruption and disruption. And I saw the angelic come in and out. And I saw that it would be disruption that could be dispatched. And I want to tell you, listen, we're in a season right now, I believe, of suddenlies. We're in a season of immediatelys. We're in a season where as we're faithful to not just hold our ground and hold the line in what God has spoke to our hearts, we're about to see God do what only God can do and then only God gets the glory. How many of you believe that with me? Amen? And I want to tell you, there are angels among us. Let's not take their presence for granted. I, pe- I speak in an awakening to your senses right now. Hebrews 5 says, if our senses are exercised, exercise to discern between good and evil, and not only would we be able to discern the good from the evil and the evil from the good, but it says many of you ought to be teachers, but you still need milk because you've not had your senses exercised to discern. And I don't feel like people need more of an explanation to enter into maturity. They need more of an experience. When Luke was writing the book of Acts to Theophilus, he said, this is the account of what Jesus came to do and to teach. I love teaching. How many of you love teaching? But I'm telling you, listen, there's something about God shows up and begin to do. And I believe that there are experiences that can come with explanation, but explanation apart from an experience is not the gospel. And so right now, how many of you just wanna just open up your hearts to a little more of what he has to give? Do we know that there's so much more? How much more does our heavenly father wanna give the Holy Spirit? And every morning I say, how much more today, Father? How much more do you wanna give and help me receive? Just open up your heart right there. He says. How much more of the Holy Spirit will he give to those who ask him? I can ask for me, but you ask for you. So why don't you take a moment right now and just begin to ask. James says, we have not because we ask not. And he is El Shaddai. He is the God of more than enough, not the God of just enough. So I just want to take a moment and get out of the way. encourage you to ask for more. Wow. More. Mm. Wow. Well, David said in Psalm, 107, he said, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his wonderful works, his works that would make you wonder, his wonderful works to the children of men. He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. But it all begins with thanks. And so God, we thank you. We thank you that you are not distant, you are not far from us, but you are present in this place. You're in us, you're on us, you're among us, and we do not take that for granted. In Jesus' name. I'm going to flip things around this morning if we could, if that's okay with you. 
we want to create as much time as possible for, for Joshua and for Janet to share what's in their heart today. But I also want to speak to you about some things that I believe that are necessary for us to steward our hearts, our homes, and this house. Amen? I originally had planned to do it after the offering, but I really feel like they we're supposed to do it now. And part of that could be so that Joshua can flow with, 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 from, from where we are in offering song and worship. And, but um, I just feel the Lord just switching things up. Is that okay? I was praying this morning. And uh, I do that a lot, by the way. Do you guys do that? And I, I, I don't do it to say I did, and I don't do it to fill a block, and I don't do it for 15 minutes here and 15 minutes. Like, we, like, we have an audience with the creator of the universe. And he loves the sound of your voice. He loves the sound of your voice, and he also loves the sound of your silence. He loves when you come and you ask and you sit and you wait for him to speak. And God has been so faithful to speak to and through this house over the years. And 2020 was an incredible year. Can we thank God for 2020? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I give you permission to be thankful for what God did in your life in 2020. You don't have to come under anyone else's dark cloud. Amen. God did amazing things in and through 2020. Amen. Come on. I was almost embarrassed at how good things were. And then I remembered I shouldn't be because he's good. Amen. And he is great at revealing how good he is in seasons that on the outside may not look that great. But my Bible says that all things will work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. How many of you here this morning, you love him with all your heart and you recognize that he's called you? He has called you. He didn't just create you. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment. And when all things work together, it didn't say that all things will be good but he can take bad things and can work them together by his spirit according to his grace and cause bad things to work out for your good and his glory, amen? amen? Joseph said it like this, what you meant to hurt me, God meant to bless me. And what the devil tried to use to take you out, God is gonna use to bring you in. What he tried to use to bring you down, God is using to bring you up, amen? And I'm so thankful for how God spoke to and through this house, even back in the beginning of 2020. And speaking to us of 2 Chronicles 20, especially verse 2020 about believing the Lord and we would be established, believing his prophets and we would prosper. Speaking to us about the life of Jehoshaphat and these insurmountable odds that were coming against him and how nations would begin to rise up against him. But, you know, he, it said that he, he feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast. In other words, fear came to him, but it did not come in him. And see, you can't control what comes at you, but you can control what happens in you. Worry and worship start with the same three letters. And what the enemy meant to bring you into worry, if you will turn it into worship, you'll begin to see God do in, for, and through you what only God can do, amen. And we see that in 2 Chronicles 20. They said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And a lot of people were saying a similar statement in 2020. And it's interesting that in the midst of their seeking God, it says they came together as a family. Verse 11 through 12 and going into 13, when the Spirit of God speaks to Jehaziel, it says they came together, mothers and fathers. There's an assault on those titles right now, but we will always use those titles. Hallelujah. I don't care what kind of legislation. Listen, I will not quit when it comes to what God has said to me. And this word right here, this dictates the decisions I make. I will not bow my knee. We will not. We will not submit to any kind of foolish legislature from the pit. This word right here is the governor in our life. This is the highest authority. And I don't care. I will get locked up before we get locked down and I will lose my life before I back off this word. To my last breath. 
We will not quit. So you don't have to come under somebody else's foolishness. And it says as mothers and fathers came together with sons and daughters, babes, and even nursing infants. When they came together, then the Spirit of God spoke. Isn't that amazing? They didn't know what to do until the family came back. Everything in the kingdom is built on the foundation of family. He is a father first. And I believe that in 2020, he, bring, he brought the family together because in 2021, he's taken his house back from the enemy. I believe it with all my heart. And see, sometimes when you've learned to do life independent of your spouse or independent of your children, that can be a learning curve, amen? But I'm so thankful that God gives us the grace to learn and grow every day. And when the Spirit of God spoke to Jehaziel, he said, the battle's not yours, it's God's. But you still have a part to play. You see, the victory is up to him but we can't see ourselves as a victim in the process. And they said, well, what, what, what's our part? He said, well, get up early, hallelujah. Some of y'all say, well, mm, I need a second witness. <laughs> if you look throughout scripture, they never whispered a song that brought a victory. He said, voice is loud and high. And they gave him a song, he said, praise the Lord. He didn't say talk about your problem. Because what you talk about grows, what you speak to moves. Get your eyes off of your problem and get your eyes on him. Praise the Lord for his mercy, his favor, his kindness endures forever. And see, when their praise went up, God came down and disrupted the enemy. COVID took out cancer. Racism took out poverty. And all of a sudden, all of these nations, all of these strongholds that were trying to appear bigger than they were, all of a sudden begin to take each other out when they no longer gave their perspective to a problem, but turn their heads to the hills from where their help comes from. Because all things are possible with God. I wanna encourage you, Kingsway. This is a season to feed your faith and strengthen your spirit, to starve your fears, and to crucify your flesh. Now, if you're like me, all you need is that, you know, as I start off every day, I'm like, Tina, I'm not gonna talk about politics today. And most messages, I'm not, oh, I'm not gonna talk about it, hallelujah. And all you gotta do is take a peek at what's going on around, and all of a sudden, you begin to manifest somebody else's mess. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In fact, there's a meme that they got in the back there. This is me most days. How do I'm like, Tina, I'm not going to do it. I won't talk about politics. <laughs> and then I just see something that awakens that prophet patriot on the inside. Amen. I can't help it. I love God. I love people. I love my country. And I believe that God has a righteous purpose for this nation. How many of you believe that the best days of America are ahead and not behind? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. They're trying to rewrite our history. And I want to tell you, America is not a nation that was built on the foundation of rebellion. But there is a counterfeit rebellion that is as the sin of witchcraft that is trying to corrupt the halls of legislature. And Charles Finney said that if the halls begin to turn, if the media is not truthful, it is the pulpit's responsibility. And I want to tell you where the political correctness has castrated the prophets, there's a few preachers in this country that are getting their balls back and they're going to say what needs to be said because they're going to reproduce sons and daughters of truth anointed by the Spirit of God. Because there are eunuchs that have been castrated in Jezebel's court that are about to get their boldness back. They're about to be awoken from their slumber and to recognize that they may have lost something in the moment, but they don't have to, be, they don't have to miss out on the movement. 
I was looking even this week as I was looking at Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Eunuchs all, God loves to help eunuchs. He does. And I'll tell you, listen, I believe that one of the things in 2020 as God spoke was many of you found your voice. Because I want to, t- I want to tell you right now, listen, the world needs your voice. Social media doesn't need your post, but the world needs your voice. <laughs> don't, I, I say that just to say, listen, don't think just because you posted on Facebook that a statement has been made. Conversations need to happen. Amen. I've never seen somebody change their mind by a Facebook post, even though I think some of mine should change some people's minds. Hallelujah. <laughs> by the way, I get out of Facebook jail tomorrow. Hallelujah. Isn't that going to be awesome? I'm probably heading right back, though. I got a lot I'm going to say. It's going to be awesome. Tune in. It'll be great. But finally, I get out of Facebook jail. And all I did was tell the truth. All I actually, I, actually, I just presented facts. And I showed people where decisions, the directions that decisions are taking them. Hallelujah. What's interesting is they blocked me from Facebook Lives and it wasn't a live that got me in trouble. It was just a fact. But it didn't align with their fiction. Amen. You know what that tells me? More people need to hear truth. Because listen, Jesus said that you shall, he didn't say you'll hear truth. If you hear truth, you're informed, but if you know truth, you'll be free. And the word know there means to be intimate with. It's the same word for intercourse. And what you choose to allow to sow into you in this season, what you give your thoughts, the meditation of your life, it's not just putting something in you, but it will reproduce through you. And this is a season of divine conception, not demonic deception. Amen? Amen. And we have an opportunity to break agreement with the father of lies. Listen, we cannot join our anointing with the accused of the brethren. You can't, listen, you cannot. With a good heart and a righteous intention and even right information, take up a wrong fight. It has to be his gifts through us, but his fruit in us. Amen. He is gentle, but he is not passive. He is kind, but not nice. Do a word study on nice. It actually comes from a French word meaning stupid and agreeable to the plan of man. I am not a nice person. I'm not, but I'm very kind. Kind, actually, if you understand the root word of kind, it means to set an order as to arrange furniture in a room so that company can come. See, a love that's kind actually is when the spirit puts things in order that are out of order. We're called to be kind. Amen. I want to remind you this morning that with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing. The word nothing means no rhema. No freshly spoken word of God lacks the power within itself to bring it to pass. So if God has spoken something to you, What he has spoken has the power within itself to bring it to pass. What he needs is your agreement. That's your assignment. To agree and say, God, what is my agreement and my alignment for this assignment look like? Don't feel like you have to take my posture. But also don't negate yours. Amen. I know what God has spoken to me. I know. And nothing can change that. And I know throughout human history, there were plenty of kings that tried to crown themselves when God had another king prepared. And so my job is to not have faith in a result or an outcome, but to have faith in the one who promised that he's faithful. That even when I can't see it, I know he's working. And that God wasn't worried. He didn't interrupt Haman when he was building gallows. In fact, he probably said, go ahead, build them a little higher. And so I want to encourage you as we go into this week, guard your hearts, preserve your peace, because your peace is powerful. Instead of watching the news, because it will deceive you. How many of you know? Last days, many become offended, their love will grow cold, and false voices, false prophets will rise up. 
and there, there is a media voice that is deceiving many right now. I encourage you, listen, feed your faith. Go back and look at those words that God has spoken to and through this house. Look to those leaders that you know you can trust, that they don't back down when the water gets hot. But they recognize that if things are coming up, it's so it can come out. We're in a season of all things being exposed so the wrong things can be expelled so together we can experience the glory that God desires us to have. Amen? Tomorrow is a very, very important date in this house and in our nation. How many of you know what tomorrow is? Can I hear it? Martin Luther King Day, right? And uh, I love Martin Luther King. I do, man. He was, he was a reformer. He was a reformer. He was a righteous man. And I believe that many people have moved away from the dream that he had, but I believe that God is calling us to live from that dream. And so I wanna let his words have a voice today. And I wanna speak from the dream that he saw because I know that with God, all things are possible. And in the same way that I said that this is part of the dream that God put in my heart, this is only a beginning. This is not the full manifestation because we are called to transform the world. And I believe that God put this dream in Martin Luther King Jr.'s heart. And there's something about when you hear someone's dream and it awakens a part of a dream in you, you can begin to take your peace with their peace and all of a sudden you come together and it's his peace. We don't have time to read the whole, all of it, but this was the part that was highlighted to me this morning as I was praying. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Come on, that we would not use an adjective to separate nouns. We would not use a description to separate, but we could have true biblical unity that celebrates diversity. <laughs> that we don't have unity around a problem, but we have unity with the Spirit. Yeah. Unity apart from the Spirit is divisive. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves, the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. And see, the enemy has never had an original idea. He's just a counterfeit. And so justice is not true justice apart from righteousness. Justice apart from righteousness will lead you to rebellion. But I believe that God is establishing his throne with righteousness and justice in our nation. I love how John G. Lake defined righteousness. He said, that which is right in God's sight. He said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. Come on. So much of even social justice right now has that backwards. But did you know that racism and hatred is a learned behavior? Kids are born loving. They don't look at what's different. They don't look, they don't see the difference. And racism the root of racism is self-hatred because how can you love your neighbor as you love yourself when you don't like you? And so when people allow racism to have a root in them, I pray for them that they have a revelation of who they are because if they see themselves as he sees them, they'll love everyone around them. Because how, honestly, how you host, a lot of times we can say how we would host God or how we'd host the Holy Spirit, but honestly, how you host people is, in, is actually the true evidence of how you would really host God. You can, you can pretend here but how you host people Monday through Saturday in your life, how you treat them, because it's Jesus in them. It's the Holy Spirit in them. That's what, that's what got Ananias and Sapphira into trouble. They didn't lie to Peter, they lied to the Holy Ghost in Peter. 
let that walk around a little bit. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, and I believe we've come a long way since this was spoken, but we still have a long way to go on all sides. So what you can't do is look at how people take something out of context. You have to say, listen, there is still an issue that has to be dealt with, but we can't be distracted. We gotta go to the root and not just be entertained by the fruit. I have a dream that one day right here with his vicious racist and his governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands. with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places, sounds a lot like John the Baptist. The crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. If you ever wanna see God's purpose for a people, a place, or a thing, look at how the enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy before the abundant life came. And when I look at the history of how the enemy has wrongly positioned Alabama and its leaders in times past to bring division, to give hatred a voice. I recognize that we have been anointed as a forerunner, a thicket clearer, a trailblazer and a pioneer to bring real unity, to bring real transformation to where we can celebrate diversity but come together in Christ, amen? That is your purpose. And so we do not agree with the division of our day. We don't agree with the media narrative of our nation. We agree with the word of the Lord and the plan of God for Alabama, for America, for the world in this season, and the part your peace plays. You see, Kingsway is simply just a card table at your grandma's house where everybody brings their peace and together we're a great big puzzle. And we eat. <laughs> Don't we? We eat, right? I'm wrapping up. This is our hope. This is the faith. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with and then he he continues but for the sake of time i encourage you go pray through his dream pray recognize the parts that speak to your heart but i want to tell you listen that dream is still looking for people who will live it out that dream didn't die with him just like jesus prophecies did not die on calvary but when he was resurrected they had a greater glory those two men on the road to emmaus they thought that all that he came to do died when he died and they didn't recognize when the lord himself drew near that he was about to fulfill his word through a willing vessel and so as we prepare even tomorrow to acknowledge a true reformer I wanna tell you 2021 is gonna be the year where revival, reformation and renaissance come together as a threefold core for awakening in our nation. It'll no longer be a war within the church or a war within our nation, but I believe that God is about to release a sovereign work on the hallelujah of the church as the angelic interruption of God comes in and begins to disrupt the camp of the enemy, begins to unseat the demonic principalities who have worked through personalities, and all of a sudden the wind of God that is on us begins to flow through us, and God gets all the glory. Can somebody agree with me this morning? And so what do we do? One, we remember. God spoke to us in February about forgotten favor. And I stand before you to declare that this is the year of God's favor. I say that every year because Isaiah 61 says I'm supposed to. Amen. The Spirit of God's anointed me to tell you that. 
This is the year of God's favor. And see, favor is not about getting more stuff. Favor is an anointing of the Holy Spirit, is a grace that comes on your life to steward what you've been given to bring heaven to others who have not yet received. Favor on you releases flavor through you to where the world can taste and see that God is good. And so we are, we're gonna go ahead and receive our offering so I can shut up, hallelujah. But I was planning on just speaking to some of this afterwards because even though I wanna make as much room as possible for Joshua and Janet today, as your shepherd, as your leader, as your pastor, your heart, more than a meeting, I thank God for meetings, I love services, but your heart and your stewardship of your grace, your peace, your gift, and your yes in this season matters the most to me. And so I want to empower you today, I want to equip you today that as God begins to touch us and he begins to move on us, that we don't just get touched and get moved, but we allow his touch to transform us so we can transform others. That we don't back away from those that we're called to have a conversation with because we have a differing political view, amen? But we're willing to allow our iron to come into relationship with their iron so together we can be sharpened and trust God to make up the difference. Do not back away from what God has spoken to you, but don't be more committed with what God has said than how God wants to bring it to pass. You know, people with my personality type, sometimes we can, we can be so connected to the what, we can misrepresent the how. But I want his word and I want his ways. Psalm 1937 says, turn my eyes away from worthless things. Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, Facebook, Twitter, fill in the blank. Really anything but this and a conversation you're called to have. Turn away my eyes from worthless things that you would revive me. Revive me in your ways. and establish your word to your servant who fears your name. See, I believe that God wants to bring his word to pass, but I believe that first he wants to revive us in his ways. The word doesn't precede the ways, the ways precede the, wor the word. Revive me in your ways. Revive me in how you do what you do so that you can establish what you desire in my day. Amen? And I think that one of the things has, that has lent itself to ups and downs and emotional responses is people putting all of their hope in how this or that. And then when that didn't happen, disappointment came in. Don't have more hope in how God is gonna fulfill his word. Put all of your hope in the fact that he will. He will. Because he's not a man that he should lie. His word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish what he sent it to do and it'll prosper in that place. It'll do well. Amen? How many of you say, I wanna be revived in his ways? I wanna see him establish his word, but I don't want his word absent of his ways. Proverbs chapter three tells us how to do this as we prepare to give today. Oh, mm. Thank you for the breath that I get to give you back. I love you, Jesus, with all my heart. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Proverbs chapter three, verse three in the Passion Translation. Speaking of the rewards of wisdom says this, hold on. I ask people all the time, how you doing? I'm holding on. I said, don't let go. People tell you, take care. Nah, I cast them. I love what Joshua did last night in changing how we talk. 
Never leave someone with a fearful farewell. Take care of yourself. I'm going to take care of others. Don't get sick. I won't. Because he's not. I believe this word. I believe this word. I I believe we're called to cleanse lepers. So if I see a leper, I'm not going to put on gloves. Yeah. Hold on. He didn't say hold on to an opinion. Hold on to loyal love. And don't let go. Be faithful to all that you've been taught. Let your life be shaped by integrity with truth written upon your heart. That's how you will find favor and understanding. He tells us what, he tells us where, he shows us how. Watching, waiting, and listening, it tells us in Proverbs 8. But he says that's how you will find favor and understanding with both God and men. But never seek favor and understanding with men apart from God because that will bring you into deception that leads to disappointment. You will gain the reputation of living life well. Verse five, trust in the Lord completely. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. That would change so much. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you. And he will lead you in every decision you make. He is so faithful. And Paul told the Romans, he said, as many as are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. And what we need right now is for sons who know their father to make him known to allow the Spirit to lead us into places. You know, the Spirit will lead you into a wilderness so that you can overcome the temptation and come out in the power. I shared with our church last week how the enemy tried to come on me to try to get me to change my position and give up my stance, but how the Lord showed me that it was, it was an angel of light trying to twist Scripture out of context for a moment to bring oppression, guilt, and shame. But when I said, God, is this you? He spoke so clearly. And I want to tell you, there has been a deception in our nation as the enemy has come as an angel of light to take Scripture out of context in the life of people that are meant to be a prophetic voice that have given up that platform because they listened to another one who spoke in a similar way to how God speaks, but absent of inspiration, witness, and agreement. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. See, you're not doing for God. Together you come together, and together you produce as one. One, it is union. It is the new covenant reality of Christ in us. It is the prayer that Jesus prayed that we would be one as he and the Father are one. He said, the same glory you gave me, I gave them. And it is stewarded in a posture of union. Communion ain't ain't about a cracker and a juice. It's about coming into union in every part of who we're called to be. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. Ouch. Ouch. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion. Wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. If it doesn't reveal him, it doesn't deserve your attention. Anything other than king and kingdom is a distraction. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the thoughts I think about you. They're good, not evil, to give you a future and hope. If you have a thought that's based in fear that he's not thinking about you, it should not be a thought thunk through you. I made that word up, thunk. Sounds good though, southern. 
Then he tells us, for wisdom will come when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. Then, when? Then you will find healing refreshment your body and spirit longs for. Ah, thank you, Lord. And then he tells us this as the worship team comes. How many believe God is about to make a way where there seems to be no way? How many of you believe that he's working even now? How many of you believe that during worship earlier that we weren't just we weren't just entering into something here, but what we were agreeing with in the earth that heaven had to say that God was having, God was releasing angelic interruption to disrupt the camp of the enemy, that what is being released, we have the authority to dispatch. He says, glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best, with every increase that comes to you. So in other words, when God blesses us, we don't look at what we get to do. First, we look at what we get to give. When your first response comes, when, 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 when you get blessed is, wow, now I get to be a blessing. That is evidence of a renewed mind. If the first thought you have when you get blessed is what you get to go by, that means that you're not yet thinking like him. But when our response is, wow, I get to be a blessing now. That's the evidence that truth really has a place in your heart. Glorify God with all your wealth, honor him at your very best, with every increase that comes to you. And then he says, if we do that, this is what happens in us. Then every dimension of your life will overflow, say overflow, with blessings. 2021 is the year of overflow. It is. And what you meditate on is what will overflow from you. If you meditate, look, 2021 is a year of greater. Greater glory, not greater suffering. Greater joy, not greater mourning. Greater anointing, not greater opposition. It is greater opportunity. But what you give your heart to, that is what is gonna increase in and through you. Isaiah 54 says, increase is coming, hold nothing back. And I wanna tell you, this is a year of increase and what you make room for in your life is what is gonna be multiplied in and through you. And I don't know about you, but I wanna make room for more of Him. Stand to your feet with me if you could. He says, every dimension, every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable, source of inner joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peter said, having not seen, yet we believe. In other words, he just said, I don't have to see it to believe it. I don't need to see your working to know you're working. He said, having not seen, yet believing, we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Do I have anybody full of glory here this morning? Come on, does anybody have some joy inexpressible, but you'll give it your best shot? Can anybody join me in rejoicing today with what God has said? We may not have seen it, but if He said it, and we, if, if, he, if we see it and we say it, the world will see what we say. He's looking for a people who will see what He says so the world can see what He speaks. Just hold your hands up to the Lord. Hold those offerings up to Him right now. Father, I thank You that this is a people that does not lean on their own understanding, but they lean into You. And so Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask for an anointing to come upon us for the days that are ahead. God, I thank You that these are the greatest days in all of human history, that these are, a, these are the days that we're gonna see an incredible difference made for Your glory, God. Lord, we do not lean on our own opinions, but we look to the Spirit of truth. We look to the author and the finisher of our faith, and we lay aside every weight and every sin that would entangle us, and we look under the cloud of witnesses that is in this room now, and we recognize that they are cheering us on. They see the finish line in sight, and we pick up the baton we pick up the baton of what you're handing to us in this season and we say we will run this race for your glory in Jesus name amen